God, if you feel like coming to the altar, come on. Praise God, 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 praise God. Quick little testimony. I know y'all have seen me walk around my neck stiff like a statue. Well, I've, I got some uh, appointments for physical therapy. I went to the first uh, physical. It basically was TENS units and heat and stuff. And I have this little nerve right here that's decided to come alive. Just running right across here. I thought I had a hair on my face, and I noticed that it's coming alive. And to me, that is sh showing that God is doing something that all those nerves, I've got a sunken place on the side where that nerve was pinched. I'm believing God, He's going to yes, heal all of it, you know. Because uh, it messes up yes. your balance and everything else when you can't turn your head. So I love you guys. I'm so glad to be here. And uh, hit it, Pastor. Yes. <laughs> Bethany uh, had uh, come to me this week and said, uh, Pastor, I think I'm ready to give a testimony. So uh, I asked her, all right, uh, so she's going to give some testimony. You know, it's, it's good. It, it's good to see people come into the house of the Lord. And it seems like a few people. You know, not everybody that comes into the house, this house of the Lord, uh, I see this happen to, but uh, it happens a lot of times. It's like when they come, they're here for a little while, and they come again, and they come again, and then, and then all of a sudden, it seems like there's a change and a light goes on. You know, uh, it seems like, you know, they come with a wall up, you know, because, and, and I guarantee you, we mean nobody no harm. We, we are here to, to demonstrate the power of God to save a wretch like me. Huh? The power of God to save a wretch like me. Amen. So uh, it is good to see someone step out and say, I got something to say for Jesus. I, I, I'm not looking for people to come step out and say, I, I want to say something for this church or that church or this person. I want somebody to step out and say, Jesus has started making a difference in my life. Amen. Amen. 
<laughs> Amen. Yeah, Praise the Lord. That's right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. There's, I guess what's washing over me is gratefulness. Um, and that's what I always try to hold in my heart because in, in everything that we are grateful for, everything that we have, every breath that we take, we would not have if it weren't for what Jesus did for us. Um, I grew up in a very judgmental type church. So um, that's part of the reason I think why it's kind of hard for me to <laughs> open up, you know, like and talk about it and stuff. But um, here I am. <laughs> and I'm not in a ditch somewhere or, you know, I, I have so much to be grateful for. Each and every one of you, especially you ladies back there, um, we've been doing Bible study, and it's like I'm mourning the loss of one family, and I have a whole nother one through Jesus, Amen. all things through Jesus. Um, all right. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I don't know how what else I could say, really. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm so grateful to be here. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Are you good? I feel like I can do so much better, so much All right. more now. Amen. I praise can, the Lord. I know I'm a healer. So yeah. Anybody needs, you know, healing. Yeah. Prayer warrior. Prayer. Amen. Yes. Declarer. Yes. Yeah. Living Declare testaments. the works of God. There That's what go. we need. Living we need testaments. people that declare healing. Yes. I mean, not healing just pray for, for healing. Everyone. Declare healing. Yes. You are healed by a stripes. Yes. Amen. The go. power's in the in the in the confidence and the profession of our faith in Him. There you go. And and we've got all the demonstrations of the power of God through Jesus Christ, and then beyond through the epistles of uh, Paul and, and and the disciples. I'm telling you, we have we have so much of we have so much of God at the at our fingertips. I mean, it's available to us. But you know. Huh? The oils and the water, you yeah. know, tools of Christ, mm -hmm. you know, the Bible, things like that. Yeah. 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 Take something in hand. Yeah. Uh, God created everything, didn't he? Um, uh, Robin came to him and said, uh, you know, this is in the bulletin. Well, these bulletins were supposed to have been handed out last week, and they, were, they weren't one made this week because I told Kathy that, it didn't have a date on it. I didn't realize it talked about the Thursday dinner. So there won't be a dinner here Thursday. Uh, it's Thanksgiving. I hope everyone has a has a wonderful Thanksgiving this week. And I think school's going to be out a few days this week. So we want to spend a lot of family time. Uh, nobody will. Well, the, I don't know where the women will have their Thanksgiving dinner. Now, the church is... Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner we've always had on the second Sunday in December, so we'll continue with that tradition. That the um, that so on the second Sunday in December, just look for a uh, celebration for Christmas and Thanksgiving. It makes it easier on the ladies uh, not having to cook. Uh, I know that uh, you know families have their traditional Thanksgiving. I think uh, Diane has hers on Thursday. My daughter, my granddaughter, the eight-year-old granddaughter, has food allergies, so she's having their Thanksgiving dinner on Friday. So I got two Thanksgiving dinners to go on Thursday and Friday. I'll have to get another size shirt, I think, when this is over. <laughs> I've tried to wear these uh, large shirts, but I'm gonna have to start wearing extra large. <laughs> Amen, Jim. Oh, yes. Amen. Let her have the, the microphone. Mm -hmm. I was blind. Well, I was glad the seeing and God saved me. But I was blind, born blind, and God healed me. He Praise seemed the Lord. To heal my eyes so I could read my Bible again. And Because uh -huh. Marty read it to me, but he passed away, and then God took him home, and I didn't have anybody to read the Bible to, <coughs> so God healed me. Mm -hmm. Right here, and I couldn't walk for a while, 
God healed me of that. So I could, I didn't have a way to drive. God furnished me a car to come to church that I wouldn't have to worry about somebody coming and getting me or sitting there not getting to go to church. And I promised God, you just get me away, Lord, to go. And I will go and praise your name every chance I get. And I've been to churches, like she said, that you have to write them a letter to get to testify like this. You couldn't stand up like this and, and say anything about what God's done for you. Man doesn't do anything really for me, but what God has them to do or puts on their heart to do, you know, for me or anybody, anyone else. And I just thank God for this little church. And I know one day we're all going to get to see him. We're all going to get to see him. Amen. And I Praise just thank the Lord. him for saving me and, and all my friends. And I thank you for this church and for your preaching, David, because you has really helped me. I said, you've preached a few sermons, and I said, I think you were just preaching to me because I needed that. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. When God does something for you and you bottle it up and don't say nothing about it, then sometimes you lose it. I mean, all the things God does for us is for us to testify about about his goodness and his power. I mean, uh, I was lost, and now I'm saved. I was a sinner, and now I'm forgiven. Amen? By the power of his word. By the power of his voice. You know, on the cross, whenever Jesus was hanging on the cross, suffering and dying, then he, he said one thing that means so much to me that that I can take for myself and claim it it said father forgive them for they know not what they're doing amen hallelujah you know we have a speaking God you know uh, it doesn't say that he's a writing God it says that he's a speaking God in Genesis uh, uh, each verse in Genesis talks about and he said and he said, let there be light. And he said this and said that all the way through the first few verses in, in the book of Genesis. And, and so he's a talking God. And in the New Testament, the Gospels refer to, to God talking as uh, those that have an ear. Let them hear. You know, so it's not for everybody uh, to to hear, but it's those that have an ear to hear, huh? So so we're called out of out of uh, uh, common life and and out of the flesh, out of the out of the routine of the world because the world is going down a path that, that of destruction. And it's the path that most people follow because they don't understand that there's two realms. There's two realms that we're privy to and we're, we, we, we know that, that there is two realms because Jesus in John 3 said, you must be born again. What's he talking about being born again? Nicodemus couldn't understand it, but 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 Jesus told Nicodemus said, said you know, he just continued on. How are you a teacher of the word of God, but you don't know these things? Because the realm that Jesus came to introduce and to open up our eyes to is a spiritual realm, which is an eternal realm that never will pass away. That will never pass away. And so to be born again means that I have an understanding that Jesus Christ took my place in the curse of death that Adam and Eve occurred on themselves. Adam and Eve occurred a death that we inherited. You know, if you go to Genesis chapter 5, it says, and Adam had sons and daughters in his likeness. But you see, when Jesus come, 
he had sons and daughters in his likeness, born to the Spirit, born of God, a new creation in Christ because the old covenant couldn't do what the new covenant in his blood accomplished. I mean, it's a, it's a great thing to know. It's a great thing to know. But, but you have to seek after those things. You see, that's the, that's the, uh, the realm that people less travel. It's foreign to them. It's foreign to them because they can't understand eternal life. It's, it's foreign to them because Satan has blinded the world to the reality of eternity. Satan has blinded them to it. You know, that's why when Paul had his uh, Damascus Road experience in, in Acts chapter 9, when, when Paul had that, that experience, then, then uh, it says that when Ananias came and laid hands on him and his eyes were open, it said like, it, it was like scales fell off his eyes and he seen brand new. That's like the new birth experience, and that new birth experience is, is coming to the reality and the knowledge of a risen Savior, a risen Savior that is the guide to eternal life, and he's called the Holy Spirit. Amen? He's called the Holy Spirit. Let us pray before we go any further. Father, we just uh, honor you right now. Lord, we honor your presence here today. Lord, we pray right now that you'd fill us with the Holy Ghost right now. Lord, we pray that you'd touch the needs and the, and the uh, consciences and the ears of those that are gathered here to hear a word from you, not from me, but a word from you, Lord. We pray that you'd have rain right here. I submit to you right now, my heart, my mouth, my mind, my being, that you might use me in any way that, that's possible to help us grow closer to you. Us all, I include myself, I need to draw closer to you because the days and the moments and the hours that are ahead of us are, are swiftly passing. And Lord, we pray for a great understanding today that we're at the end. We're at the end. Your story is folding up on itself and completing itself through the Word of God and your spoken voice that speaks to us come out of the world and be you separate, be born again anew in Christ Jesus. Let the spiritual life flow through every person here today. Lord, we know that we need the blood to flow through the body to keep the body going, but there'll be a day that there'll be no need for this body anymore. And we welcome that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It seems like things that, that is hard to understand. It seems like we're at a, a preface in time. And, and we see Scripture, uh, uh, we, we see Scripture unfolding before eyes if you're a student of the Word of God. If you're a student of the Word of God, you see in this world the time frame that God spoke of in times past. I mean, uh, G I mean it was hard to understand for, for all the people that surrounded Jesus. It was hard to understand and impossible to understand by the disciples that followed Jesus day by day. They, they even questioned Jesus, said, when is these things going to happen? And when, when they were questioning Jesus about when these things were going to happen, they were already happening around them constantly. They were seeing Jesus when John sent uh, his disciple to Jesus to see if he was the one. Jesus said, tell John that eyes are being opened. The dead is being raised. And so he, 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 
even John being anointed of God. I mean, he was born of a man and woman, Elizabeth and Zechariah. But, but when Jesus, when Mary conceived uh, Jesus and, and she went to, to, to see Elizabeth, the cousin, and, and they came near to each other, the baby within Elizabeth, John, leapt in her not even being born, leaped in her belly, in her womb, uh, at the presence uh, of Jesus, just the seed. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the Word of God is sure. The Word of God is sure. But it's hard to understand if you only use eyes that we see through. Early in the in the 19th century, early then, there was a guy named uh, Isaac Newton. He was one of the, the the brainstorms of the time that he lived in. Isaac Newton, and he said he he was reading and studying uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. And and let me tell you what Daniel chapter 4, uh, uh, tr chapter 12, verse 4 says. It says. Uh, but thou, read it, uh, Carol. Well, let me read it. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. The book. You see, it's words written on a page. Because, but it's the Spirit of God speaking to Daniel. You see, Daniel is a, is a prophetic book of, of the current times and the futuristic times of Daniel's day. Uh, it covered those events in Daniel, and then it covers the, the revelations of Jesus Christ or the revelation of Jesus Christ that John wrote up in the book of Revelations. And, and it wrote, he, he, he even followed the same line as John did when he wrote his gospel. The gospel of John is the deity of Christ, and, and deity means the eternal Godhead, the, the power of God in the world because he became a man. God became a man. Amen? So here in Daniel chapter 4, verse uh, uh, chapter four, 12, verse 4 says, seal up the book, even to the time of the end. So he's telling Daniel that the book's going to be sealed up to the time of the end. To the time of the end. So we know that we're in the end times. We're in these days that the, that the books are, 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 are folding up and, and fulfilling themselves in, in our time. And so, uh, you want to take that up right there, uh, Carol? Just read verse 4. But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, now Isaac Newton, this this brainiac of their time, he, he thought this out when he was studying Daniel, and he thought, how would this ever happen? And he made the comment, and, and it's re recorded and reported that Isaac Newton said that for this scripture, this verse, and it was under, not being able to be understood, even in his time, a hundred years ago, 150 years ago, it, it was not even understood then because we it wasn't at the end times then. But Isaac Newton made this statement. He said, for that to happen, a person would have to exceed 50 miles an hour. <laughs> huh? He made this proclamation that, that there's no way that anybody could ever achieve speeds of 50 mile an hour to uh, fulfill Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. So here he's got the limelight, and then there was another scientist named Val, uh, Valatar, Valatar, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Valatar. He was another scientist in the league with Isaac Newton, and he said, Isaac Newton's crazy. 
Isaac Newton has to be crazy because no one could ever exceed 50 miles an hour. Huh? So that was the, 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 the mindset of, of, of this era in time. And how much further have we ex excelled past that timeline to know the things that are going on now? You know, Daniel is such a, a great book. And, and, and if you go to Daniel chapter 9, chapter 10 and 11, it should have been run all together. Chapter 10 and chapter 11 should have been run together because it covered prophecies that, that Gabriel, messenger from God, gave Daniel, and he recorded in chapter 10 and chapter 11. He covered 150 years from his time. He covered, uh, he covered a time that, uh, that, that uh, Antioch and Palma, Palma May, P-H, how, how you pronounce that, P-H-O-M-E-Y, Okay, he was one of the generals that followed. He was one of the generals that followed uh, Alexander the Great. You see, when Alexander the Great died, he didn't leave an heir, even though he had two sons, which were killed within 13 years after his death. He, he said, as he died, he said, they asked him who would be over the kingdom that he had conquered, and he said, it's to the strong. To the strong. So what happened within 15 years, they, they warred against each other. The four generals that, that followed uh, uh, Alexander the Great divided up the kingdom. Well, Ptolemy, Ptolemy, I believe is how you pronounce it, took the kingdom of Egypt up into the lower part of, of, of uh, that area below uh, Israel. So Israel was on the borderline uh, against uh, Seleucus. Seleucus was another general that took that eastern section of the country that that uh, that uh, Alexander the Great conquered. And so the history of that uh, concurred for 150 years, and it covered uh, uh, Antipa and Antipas the fourth, which was. Uh, was the one that offered a, a pig on the altar. I mean, this is how precise the Word of God is in prophecy. And this Antipapus that came along, the fourth, decided that he was going to take over uh, the area uh, of Egypt and everything. And, and so when, when he couldn't do it, when he saw the ships the, of, uh, of uh, actually the word means the Roman Empire, coming to the Mediterranean Sea, he knew he couldn't go into Egypt because they were coming into there. So he went back and, and overthrew the, the, the government of Israel. That's what spurred the uh, Maccabee conflict. And so it covered for 150 years of history. This is history that, that Daniel talked about. And so it was so precise, it even covered, it even covered uh, uh, one person that went into Egypt and married a 10-year-old kid was uh, Cleopatra. That's the history of it. She was uh, sent down, and she married uh, the, the, the heir because, I mean, it's a messed up, I mean, soap opera. I mean, you ought to just set it down in front of you try to reason it out, but it's, it's so precise. And so I tell you this to tell you how precise God is in these days that we're living in now. And so we see the great falling away. We see the things happening that, that, that you know, are going to happen in these closing uh, days before the tribulation begins. We see them. You see, and, and getting back to the Gospels, go to Luke uh, 19 with me. Getting back to the Gospels, Jesus ran into the same conversations with the disciples and those that followed him in his day 2,000 years ago. And so 
verse 19, verse 10. Read that, Carol. Chapter 19, verse 10. Chapter 19, verse 10. So Jesus here uh, in in 19 of, of Luke, in chapter 19 of Luke, says in verse 10 that, that Jesus is telling those that are following him, he's come into the world to seek and save those that are lost. He's still on the job. He, he Let me tell you something. He's still on the job. Those that have an ear to hear... What thus saith the Lord, let him hear. If you're not saved, sanctified, and full of the glory, full of the power, full of the surety to know that Jesus Christ is here. Now. His spirit is here. Now. His power is here. Now. It's available to each and every one of us, but we got to get all the clouds and all the doubt out of our out of our being before we're going to walk in the Spirit, before we're going to fully fulfill the will of God for our time. Because there's going to be a revival take place in the world when the rapture is taking place. There's going to be a revival. There's going to be tribulation saints that can't be numbered during the tribulation. <laughs> it's written and so it will be, just like it was written in Daniel, in the book of Daniel, and it was and it is coming to pass now. Hallelujah. It's time to get our battle gear on. Some of you saw the, the video, the tape that Donna showed Wednesday night. Heaven's war. There's recorded in, in the scripture in Revelation that there's a war going on in heaven. It's not that God's going to fight a war with Satan. It's not that God's going to be in some kind of battle with, uh, with uh, Satan for souls. The battle is Satan and you. Huh? The battle pertains to Satan, and he's coming to battle you and me. And what is his warfare? His warfare is deceit. His warfare is deception. His warfare is to get you to think that hell ain't that bad. Huh? Come on now, we act like hell ain't that bad. If we if we just grasp the 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 outcome of, of the battle and 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 we we came to the realization that hell is that bad, we changed the way we lived. Huh? I'm telling you, if you only have hope in this world, huh, you're miserable. Huh? If you only have hope in this world, you're miserable. I mean, there's a story in Second and First Kings about about uh, my, uh, the grandfather. Now I don't know the the chapter, but there's a story in there about the grandfather of Bathsheba. He was one of uh, David's mighty men, huh? And you know when when David went and and took Bathsheba and had Uriah her husband killed. I mean, it throwed him a curve. Twenty years later, he carried a grudge twenty years against David, being one of David's mighty men of valor. He was a mighty man that followed David. But when David done this, I mean, he turned against him. And when, when Absalom came on the scene, he buddied up with him twenty years later. Huh? And so... He, he gave Absalom advice, and he asked Absalom, and said, give me 12,000 men of war, and I'll go against David. And so Absalom didn't take his advice. Absalom didn't take his advice. I can't think of how you pronounce his name, but the story's in, in, in uh, 1 Kings. Uh, 
or the end of Second Samuel one, but but and I just the story occurred to me, and it's reading. I started talking about it because I want to be led of the Spirit, huh? So what happened to him when when Absalom didn't take his advice? You know what he done? He got on his animal and rode back to his house, and he hung himself. He hung himself. Because it wasn't the way he wanted it to be. A lot of times we, we fall in the ditch with Satan because things don't work out the way we want them to work out. Huh? God has a plan, and God's not going to deviate from his plan, and, it, and it, it, it doesn't incorporate your plan. It's his, it's his way. He's the only way. He's the only name under heaven that man can be saved by. And it's his way because he knows best. He sees the whole picture all the time. He sees the whole picture all the time. Not only sees it, he's involved in it. Not only sees it, he's involved in it. So here in, here in, uh, in Luke chapter 19, you hear the, uh, Jesus make this statement to, to those that are following him. Uh, and, and he says, the Son of Man has come but to seek and save that which is, was lost. Notice it doesn't say that which is lost. Huh? It says was lost. So when, when they didn't receive that, just like some of you not receiving what I'm saying today, huh? some of you are not receiving it, but, but the Word of God's good. Huh? The Word of God is what can, can break the yokes and save the soul. Huh? So here uh, it goes on, Carol, in verse 11 to 13. And as, they, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought, they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Okay, said, wait a minute. And they thought the kingdom of God should immediately appear. And it was there. Jesus told them time and time again, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. <clears throat> Let me tell you again, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven, and why he said at hand, he said it because it's just a hand reach out. You can, you can get hold of it right here. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. If you want it, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why wouldn't you want it? You know, there was a scene that was the, it was the turning point of that movie that Donna showed. There was a scene, and, and this gentleman that the, the spiritual warfare was going on for his soul and his destiny was, was saying, why didn't God do something? Why ain't God done something? You mean this loving God allows children <coughs> to die of cancer and all this stuff? And, and so he was accusing God to Gabriel. And as he was saying, why didn't God do something? Why ain't God going to do something? This loving God, and as he was backing up, as he was backing up in the scene, he backed right into the cross. And when he bumped into the cross backwards, he, he backed into the cross like this. And when his hand felt back to what happened, he, he saw the cross and he pulled his hand back and the blood of Jesus that ran down the cross was on his hand. Huh? And he said, why wouldn't humanity love Jesus? Why wouldn't humanity love Jesus? Because Jesus changed the game. Jesus opened the books back up. And, and, and the, the thing about it is, he opened the books back up in a way we wouldn't think. Because they question what's going on, Jesus. Why? They wasn't there when Jesus was born, but they heard the testimony of Mary, Mother Mary. Huh? They heard the testimony of how Gabriel came. I mean, uh, Gabriel an angel, Gabriel, came into the realm that Mary was in 2,000 years ago in a town called Nazareth, a lowly place like Nazareth. And the thing about it is, that blows my mind is, he came lowly. 
the lowest in a manger. I mean, a manger's where animals feed. Huh? You see, a manger's where animals feed. You know what the world thinks about us? The elite of the world think about us. They call us animals. Huh? Come on now, that's what they call us, animals. You know, 7 billion people, 1% of 7 billion people own all the wealth of the world. The average income of 7 billion people, the average income, and this is astounding being an American, is $6 a day. <coughs> That's the, the average income for the 7 billion people that 1% of that number controls the economy of the world. You see, they got a plan. They got a plan. But you see, we've had a plan. Huh? We've had a plan from the get-go. Huh? I mean, the plan was that, that, that uh, December 2nd, 1951, that the doctor would be spanking me on the bottom. And I'd be ho hollering. Ah! Huh? Woo! Glory! Huh? From the time I was born, he had me on his mind. Before I was born, he knew that my grandpa was going to have a, a thing for my grandma. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he's got a plan for my end. Not only my beginning, he's got a plan for my end. And you know what? I trust him with it. That's what you have to do is you have to trust him with your end because he began your beginning. <laughs> what a God. What a God reaches over the boundaries of eternity and comes right where I am. Hallelujah. What a God. Did you read any further? Go ahead. No. 11 through 13. When they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was not in <coughs> Jerusalem and because he thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered from and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. He ain't getting nowhere with this bunch of people. He just got through telling them he come to seek and save that which was lost. And then he just turns it over to a parable because it's to those that have an ear to hear. You see, there has to be a tugging on your heart. The voice of God is calling your name. The vo God's presence right here, right now, those that are, are not hearing the Spirit of the Lord speaking here, and, and His Spirit speaking here today is telling you how much He loves you. His spirit is telling you how much that guy that was accusing God that backed into the cross and finally realized that's how much you love me. Wow. What am I going to do with that? But. No, not but. Well. No, not well. Why? Not why. It had to be. For me, you got up there. You were beaten. You see, in that movie, it showed that man backed into the cross and he fell on the ground because uh, God allowed him to feel some of the agony of of Jesus taking his stripes for his healing. Huh? And so here this knowledge is poured out on the world. But you see we have we have one percent of the world population 
that guides the, the narrative. You see, I watched a little thing that uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, anybody know who Mark Zuckerberg is? Uh, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, he's the one who developed Facebook. Well, he, he said, we're changing the narrative. We're going we're gonna to make Facebook a multiverse. We're going to make Facebook a multiverse. So how do I know that we're at the door? Now, I'm going to give you a little tidbit right here, and I'm going to ask you to search it out. I thought about even... I thought about even showing this uh, clip or this little, this, this is a preacher out of California. Anybody ever hear of Dr. Uh, Kim, I see Dr. Gene Kim? You ever heard of him? Put that up on the screen there, Carl. Put it on the big screen and then put it up there. He done a teaching on the 19th of this month. Today's the 21st, so he did this teaching here on Friday. And so this is him right here. Now, I pushed it out there to almost two minutes, and but, but this is the multiverse thing. It's the great narrative. You see, the great narrative that they're planning in these meetings they're having in the, in, in the trilateral commission and all those things, these meetings they're having is try to reason how we can control the narrative that the sheeple will follow. One of the, the highfalutin people made a speech, and he said, we have the knowledge, we have the narrative, we have the ability to control the narrative, but it's questionable whether the people will follow. Huh? So here they're planning this multiverse, Facebook, and I tell you, Facebook controls a lot of people's narratives. Huh? Meta, yeah. Run it over there about three-fourths of the way, Carl. Now this, if you go, if you want to look at it, go to YouTube and type in Real, real Bible believers. That's their name of their ministry. He goes through all this information. He goes through all this information, brings it down to, to a finish of how that they're controlling the narrative to set up. What, what do you think they're trying to set up? Yeah, and and this guy that's over this, this guy that's over this, is leading the charge. You see, the richest entity in the world, the richest entity in the world is not uh, Jeff Basil. The richest entity in the world is the Catholic Church. They control the stocks in all the major, they control the stocks in all the major industries in the world. And the Pope has control of all their riches. But the Pope ain't, the Pope's not the Antichrist. Pope's not the Antichrist. But you see, I, I, you know, if you want to know, if and, and I hope you want to know, because in warfare, you, you know, like I told you a while ago, the war's not against God. The war, the war is against you. And and so, if you're going to fight a battle and you don't know your enemy and his strengths, then you're going to lose. You got to know his tactics, huh? But you're going to lose anyway unless you hear the voice of God. You see, I was uh, talking, I was talking and listening to the guy, and he said, 
he said, you know, I remember when I was a little kid, he said, I remember my daddy taking me fishing. Anybody ever been fishing with their daddy? Huh? Here's what he said. He said, we'd get the boat hooked up, and we'd go out to the lake to go fishing. We'd be out there early in the morning. We'd launch the boat. And he said, I remember my daddy always. He'd go out in the lake, and, and, and when we'd get ready to start fishing, he'd stick his finger in his mouth. What was he doing? He said, I was, my daddy was checking for when the, which way the wind was blowing because which way the wind was blowing, it depended on which way the wind was blowing to which side of the boat to fish on. Huh? To what place to go to fish because we wanted to see which way the wind was blowing because the wind controlled where the fish was. Huh? And so the Ruach of God. I go out, he says, occupy. Luke chapter 19, verse, uh, I went to, I went and moved off that. It says, uh, occupy do I come. 13, verse 13. 19, 13. Occupy do I come. You see, the thing of it is, here's the, here's the story. We, we, we were winding down here. And I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the light. Why am I telling you that? Because he told me that. I read it in his book. Huh? It's true, okay? So, uh, so I read it in his book, and so... Mm. Help this old fool. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Let me tell you. Occupy till he comes. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're go well, I'm, get I'm getting it. Go to, go to John chapter 6. Occupy means labor, work, do whatever. I mean, build houses, speak, set up dinners, have plan your Thanksgiving, Christmas dinner, all that. Go ahead and live life. Let me see where to start in six. Mm. All right, John six. Okay, we're going to start at verse. Uh, Let's go to verse 53. Just start reading at verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have Wait a minute. life in you. Hold it, hold it. So what's he talking about here? Jesus is talking, he says, uh, 53 says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily. When he says verily, verily, then it means he's got something important to say. Uh huh. So we have communion every service. We have communion every service, and and so uh, communion. He said at the Last Supper, he said, "Do this and remember to me often." You know, Luke. I mean, uh, 
1 Corinthians 11 talks about taking the communion wordily because they broke bread from house to house. So taking communion. So this is a spiritual application for a physical thing that God is saying. So in order to understand this, you have to understand that there's two realms that we're abiding in. Okay? So he's saying... I just wanted to explain that right there. Go to 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. And the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. So, that, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. All right, what bread is he talking about? He's talking about the manna that fell down from heaven in 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 the Exodus. So when you know there weren't any food when they were wandering in the wilderness. You can have your plans, but it's better to wander with God. I don't know what he's going to do next, but I'm all on board. Huh? Go ahead. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Go on. These things said he in the synagogue, and he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? And when Jesus knew. All right. Wait a minute. Many of his disciples. Now, he had a large following because he, in chapter 6, there's when he fed the 6,000. So he had a large following. They were following him, and eventually, you know, he told them, he told them, he said, that they're just following me for the fishes and the loaves. Huh? That's what uh, he said. And so... Um, that's a question we need to ask ourselves. What are we here to gain? What are we here to gain? I'm not here to gain eternal life because I already have it. I'm here to gain souls for my labor. I'm here to influence people to know the other realm that's eternal come out of the physical realm that's temporal that's passing away our life is but a vapor today it is and tomorrow's gone so where is your value system where's your moral moral compass moral compass you see the moral compass is almost gone for most of this generation it is. It's diminishing fast. Now, he says, verse 61 says, When Jesus knew uh, in himself that the disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Does this offend you? That I'm going to symbolically... And joyfully take an unleavened piece of bread. And I'm going to ask for God to forgive me of my even secret sins. Nobody knows that him and me. Even he knows things that I don't even recall. Does it mean that I'm going to take this is a representation of his body, and I'm going to put it in my mouth in remembrance that on that cross, his body was given for me. Does it mean that the blood that ran down that cross, that ran down that cross, you know what? This is one of the symbolic symbols of a, a Jewish wedding. The, 
the father makes the arrangements for a, a Jewish wedding, and the husband or the the husbandman and the bride write out a, co a covenant a, a covenant with one another, and they take a little cup of wine or juice and they drink it and they say this. They say this to each other. I will not drink of this vine again until we're in our, each other's presence again. What Jesus say at the Lord's Supper? He wasn't going to drink of the vine again until they were in his presence. So it was a marriage thing. And how, I mean, he identifies himself as the, as the husbandman in uh, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, he, they say, uh, what, uh, why do your disciples eat and drink and John's disciples didn't? He said, how can the bride restrain when the bridegroom is in her presence? So he identifies himself as the bridegroom. The bridegroom is the one that's in Matthew 25, verse 1 through 10 at the, the five wise and five foolish virgins. So here he, he's giving so much information that, that he came and he did what he had to do that we might have life everlasting abundantly. So go ahead, Carol. Does this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickens. Amen. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him my father. Okay. You tracked with me there? He's talking about being in me, eating his flesh and his drinking his blood. He's talking about being in me. He just fed the 6,000 in the first part of chapter 6. So he's talking to the ones that are following him, and, and they're thinking and they're reasoning in their minds. I mean, there ain't no way nobody can achieve 50 miles an hour. Huh? That's what they're thinking. There's no way that anybody can achieve what you're saying, Lord. We're not going to eat your flesh and drink your blood. And so they dropped the ball right there. They dropped the ball right there. Now, I want you to notice the next verse. You know what the next verse is? You know what the next verse is? John 6, 6, 6. The mark of the beast. The next verse is John 6, 6, 6. Do you know that was in the Bible? John 6, 6, 6. And some of you will leave here today. And they will do this. Verse 66 says, From that time, from that time, many of his disciples. I mean, they were in there. They were, to be a disciple, you have to be, you have to follow in the footsteps. You have to eat the dust of the master. Huh? We went through that teaching once before. How that a disciple of a of a of a teacher would would forget leave everything, and they'd be at the whim of the teacher, and they'd follow in the dust right behind him. They'd follow him in the dust, and everything they'd do, they were his servant, and so. That's what the, what it meant. They were following him. They were helping him feed. The, 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 they just helped him feed six, ten, six, they just helped him feed uh, six thousand people, five thousand people, plus women and children. And it says, from that time, many of them, many of his disciples, went back and walked no more with him. Walked no more with him. 
Will you stand with me? You know, William Branham, William Branham, he was a teacher in the early 1900s. William Branham was a prophet. I mean, he, he saw, as a little kid, he saw the, the trees blowing in, the, in, the, in his yard. He saw the trees blowing in his yard, and, and he, heard, he heard the Spirit of the Lord said, follow me. William Branham heard the, the words of the Lord and said, he's seen, the, he's seen the, the leaves, the trees moving, the wind blowing, and he heard the voice of God said, follow me. William Branham said a prophecy in, in the early 1900s that there would be a woman president at the end time. He prophesied that. You know what happened this week? Our first woman president happened this week. It, <laughs> for 85 minutes, Camelia Harris was sworn in as president of the United States. <laughs> it's in, I mean, it's in this daily caller. I'm telling you, we're in the last days, in the last moments. I mean, shake yourself Shake yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to open up your ears to hear because there's a cry coming from the spiritual realm, make my way straight. Make my way straight. Don't be like the disciples that decided it's too hard. How can I understand that Daniel said in chapter 12, verse 4, people will be running to and fro in the earth? How can I understand that when they can't even achieve 50 miles an hour? Huh? How can I understand it that this Kim or this Gene Kim? Unreal Bible Believers YouTube just taught the, I mean, every line and every tittle of the globalist plan to control the narrative in this world. But you see, you, yeah, you know, yeah, we have to stand up as individuals. They're going to try to control the narrative of, of the world. Are you of this world? No. Are you of this world? No. Then come out of unbelief. Come out of unbelief because this stuff is happening. It's going to happen, and we're at the press of it. You know that on the 18th and 19th of this month, the longest eclipse of the moon happened. You know how many hours it was? It was three and a half hours. What's the three and a half? What's three and a half? Three and a half years of tribulation? Daniel's uh, nine. Daniel nine. Come on now. We're, being, we're seeing Bible right here. We're seeing the written word. But you need to hear the, hear the voice of God. You need to hear the voice of God. William Branham saw it, saw the wind. He heard the voice of God. William Branham would go into church services. I mean, the rooms would be full, and he'd just bide time. He'd bide time talking about the Bible. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he said, the angel showed up. And when the angel showed up, they lined up. They came up, and he told them everything about them. Healed people, move of God like never before. I mean, probably has been before, but in known history. I mean, here we are. Do we believe God for a, an awakening in our church? You know, when we started out the service today at 1 o'clock, I mean, 
I was wondering if we were going to have a, an awakening. Huh? It was hardly anybody in the pews. I wonder where, where everybody is. I mean, I wonder in these, this, this time, well, if this one's going to be preaching, I ain't going to go. If that one's going to do this, I'm not going to go. If this one ain't there, if this is not going on, I'm, I, I got something else to do. Come on now, I'm getting in your business. Are we the church? I mean, the anointing is the same right on that back pew where William is. He was up there anointing a while ago. The anointing is the same there. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead abides in you. Huh? Or, or did I misquote that? Huh? Do you believe it? Why don't you act like it? Huh? If the spirit that got Jesus up out of the grave after he'd been beaten, flogged, hung on a cross, nailed to a cross, bled out, bore the weight of all the sins that's ever been committed, bore the sins on his shoulders, went into the bowels of the earth, preached himself to the, those in, in Abraham's bosom, and they came out into paradise. That same spirit abides in us. Is he asleep in you? Or are you asleep in him? Come on now, let's bow our heads. Today is the day of the Lord. I'm walking out my salvation. Are you? Ask yourself, am I walking out my salvation or do I need help of the Holy Spirit? If you realize right now that you need the Holy Spirit to help you, I'm on, I want you to signify by raising up your hand. I need the Holy Spirit to intervene in my life. I don't want to quit following him. No matter how hard it gets, he'll equip me for the, all the way through. Just signify it by uplifting your hand. All right, he sees that. Okay, right, lower your hands. If there's anybody in this house today that don't know Jesus in the free pardon of sin and you want to know him and you want to be saved and on your way to heaven, if you'll just slip up your hand right now, we're going to pray for you. All these people that said that, that they need guidance from the Holy Spirit is going to step out and, and activate the prayer that is within them, the Holy Spirit praying through them. If there's anybody in this building that don't know Jesus in the free pardon of sin, right now is the time to signify it because we're running out of time. You don't have a promise of tomorrow. Would anybody say, save me, Jesus? Okay, I guess everybody's saved then. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a good thing. Hallelujah. All right, look up here. Let's, let's pray. Father, we just pray right now that you would pour out your spirit upon this church. Lord, let it begin here. Lord, I don't know what other churches are doing, but, Lord, we are concerned about this church. We're concerned about this church. Fill us with the Holy Ghost and power that we might spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the last days, that we might be active and, and involved with, the, with our faith and our salvation. Lord, help us to have a heart desire to seek you while you can be found. Help us, Lord, to pray for ears to hear. Help us to have prayer. Help us to pray for ourselves that we might have ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. Help us to see and gauge where the Spirit's blowing and which way we should walk and walk in it, dear Lord. We pray that you'd minister to, to us the power that we, we would have the authority by the power of the Holy Spirit to declare a thing, to declare healings over the sick. Lord, we pray for Samantha right now. She's getting ready to go to Florida because her daughter, 12-year-old daughter, has bone cancer and is going to have surgery tomorrow. Lord, she's going to have to, she's trying to raise the money just to, 
to be able to get the gas and the, and the finances to, to be able to be there for her daughter tomorrow. And, and, Lord, we pray right now that we declare a healing over this baby, dear Lord. We declare it done right now in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, grant this petition right now. Help us, Lord, to, to intercede for for this baby, Lord. She's 12 years old and suffering bone cancer. Lord, we call it out. We call bone cancer out. We cast it as far as the east is from the west. <coughs> heal, heal this baby. Help her. Help this child's mother to get their, this child's side that's in Florida right now. Lord, we pray that you'd minister, equip Samantha with the faith that she needs to stand with her daughter and declare healing over her right now. Lord, we just pray you grant this petition especially, Lord, but Lord, we do pray for lost souls. Lord, we pray that you'd minister to each and every one of us that we might be effective and, and, and involved in our faith, that we might testify to a lost and dying world that people might be saved, everlasting saved. Lord, as you grant these petitions, we'll give you the glory and honor for everything that you do today and every day because we are following you and we're persuaded like Paul, we're persuaded that that eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has entered into the mind of man. What great things that God has in store for those who believe. Grant it in Jesus' name. Grant it in Jesus' name. If you haven't prayed for Samantha and her daughter, I pray that you just stick your hand out towards Samantha. She's here in the altar. And, and and add your prayer to the prayers that are going up right now for this baby. Uh, this world is cruel, and it will take you out in a second if you allow it to. But we have power in the in the new birth, this experience with as Jesus has given us the spirit uh, of life and not death. We give you the glory for it all because we ask it in Jesus' name. Grant it, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus.